Hello and welcome to today's Cutter Consortium webinar with Dr. Giancarlo Succi. I'm Rich Whalen and I'm the host of today's session. In just a minute, Dr. Succi will begin his presentation on the mobile environment, but before turning the reins over, I'd like to tell you a little bit about today's webinar environment. To enlarge the presentation, just click the full screen button, which you'll find in the upper right hand corner of the slide pod. To return to the original size, just click that full screen button a second time. You can ask questions or make a comment at any time during this session by using the questions chat pod. Just type your question or comment in the box at the bottom of the pod and hit your enter key or click the speech balloon to the right of that bar to send it along and it will be added to the queue. If your question has anything to do with the logistics of the session, I will reply privately to you via chat. In today's Cutter's, in today's Cutter's webinar, Cutter Senior Consultant Giancarlo Succi will cover a range of topics that will help you understand the mobile environment, the characteristics that make it so unique, and how they contribute to a new business model. He will explain what channels are available for distribution to your organization's mobile applications, and will also review various strategies to monetize your mobile apps. Dr. Succi is a senior consultant with Cutter Consortium's Agile Product and Project Management Practice. He has consulted with private and public organizations worldwide in the areas of Agile methods, software quality, software system architecting, design, development, IT strategy, and training for software personnel. Dr. Succi is a tenure professor at the Free University of Bolzano Bozen in Italy, where he directs the Center for Applied Software Engineering. Dr. Succi's research involves multiple areas of software engineering. In the area of Agile, he is particularly interested in empirically evaluating the relationships of methodologies and practices, assessing their impact on quality and productivity, and determining the scope of the application of different Agile methods. Within experimental software engineering, his research, uh, his research deals with measuring the effectiveness of so-called software best practices using non-invasive tools, software metrics, standard statistical techniques, statistical meta-analysis, and neural networks, with special attention on quality, reliability, and customer satisfaction. Welcome, Giancarlo. Welcome to everyone, and thank you to everyone for being here. And I'm really pleased to have uh, so many people coming to listen to what I'm going to talk to. So, uh, as you see today, as well uh, as well, uh, well presented by Rick, I'm going to talk, present you some uh, introductory idea of how it is possible to make a business out of mobile applications. And so, um, first of all, in order to determine how to make a business on a mobile application, we need to understand the context of our business. So, mobile application are application that are intended to work on smartphone and tablets. Typically, these are all devices that are uh, feature uh, the fact of being ubiquitous, meaning they are present in many different contexts. They have uh, <coughs> power, which is higher than the power they used to have in previous year. It's an environment which produces a large amount of wealth, that is, uh, has an intrinsic heterogeneity in terms of uh, target uh, environment and also target operating system, and uh, exposes also limitation with respect to the standard computational platform we are used to. And uh, so in order to better understand what we are dealing, it's important uh, to determine the distinction that exists between mobile environment and the typical desktop environment. So, uh, clearly, mobile environment have, uh, you know, features which are similar to the feature of the desktop environment. However, they have some aspects which makes them unique. We will discuss more other aspects later on, but first of all, let us say that uh, the first, more evident distinction is that the number of potential of users, existing users of mobile devices is something like uh, a uh, hundred times the number of users of desktop. So the market is by itself much, much larger. Second aspect related to the computational power which is present on this device. And so going ahead. Typically, the major vehicle of distribution of application present in our mobile environment is the so-called application market. So we have multiple application markets 
this application market host hundreds of thousands of different products and have downloads which may reach numbers of millions per day. Our question is, how can I produce successful application for such a wide and competitive market? Now, the primary and most influential application market which are present today are the iOS Store and the Google Play. And uh, so again, our question is how can we determine how I can make a successful application into this kind of stores? Well, first of all, we often say a successful application is an application of high quality. So I need to understand better what I mean by high quality. High quality can mean high rating, can mean positive reviews, can mean nice performances for developers, and then once we have defined the proper suitable aspect of quality, can we link the goal of a mobile software market with the feature of this application? How can I ensure that it is compliant? How can I ensure that it is of a proper quality? And so let's go more in deep about the structure of a mobile environment. So first, our mobile environment is, by all means, a computer. It's a computer because we have a computational power and we have an handset terminal with, uh, you know, we have, we will have been exposed to a major shift in interest because before they were just simple communication device and now they are high-end multipurpose computer equipment. And uh, smartphones are driven by powerful operating system and uh, an operating system allows users to add and remove applications with an architecture which is similar to that of a PC. However, there are features of a mobile software market which do not match the feature of a typical uh, computer system. The first of all is that the display is typically much smaller. It is much smaller also of the display which were used tens of years ago. The second aspect is that the CPU is limited. Well, somehow we might have already experience of limited CPU, but the third interesting aspect is that the power supply is also limited. And this is a feature which is totally new because so far we always dealt with computers for which the only problem related to power supply was heating. Now we do have a problem of limited power supply. And then we have a problem related to the very limited input mechanism for this kind of mobile. And so this limitation defines the framework in which we move and define how we can think, how we can conceive application for this mobile environment and how I can you know manipulate this kind of application and determine where to take most benefit out of that. Clearly depending on the limitation we can analyze the limitation in the context of our application and two aspects on one side handle it as a non-functional requirement. The second aspect is Understanding that substantially there can be two aspects. One aspect is that our limitation could be evolving over time and then disappear. The second aspect is that there are limitations which may be inherent. And so now we already introduced an aspect which is a typical feature of the mobile environment. The fact that the environment evolves over time and evolves very fast over time. So sometimes uh, application enter the market on a given feature and then find that the market has dramatically changed. For instance, we can consider that Google, Android, the Android operating system, you know, over one year has switched from an environment completely without any Bluetooth support into an environment with full Bluetooth support. And clearly this has changed significantly how the different applications could have been developed because new opportunities have arisen. The typically evolving constraints are constraints related to availability of resources, increased bandwidth, enhanced signal coverage, you can say also increased input mechanism, while constraints which are inherent to the mobile device, first of all is the site. It's the site because while we can always have better screens, we always have to think that we want always to have our mobile environment to stay in our 
pocket. And uh, in order to put it in our pocket, it can never have a size of a full desktop environment which we are used to. So we need to stay with an environment which is smaller. The second has to have a, a lightweight, otherwise we won't be able to carry. We have a limited screen dimension. And then the aspect is that we have a limited power supply. Now we are always developing better batteries. Better batteries which last longer. Still, still, we have to consider that the power supply is limited. So, for instance, now, already nowadays, if I launch on my mobile environment, if I activate on my mobile environment, all the different possible uh, devices which are there, my device is not going to last more than a couple of hours. So, still, you know, the problem of the power supply, even though we are building always newer batteries is a problem which is there and for which we need to define suitable feature. <clears throat> so developers require mechanism to understand the, the mobile environments so that they can handle a different application from a quantitative point of view and also from a domain specific point of view. So how do I understand my mobile environment. So what are the key quality drivers for my mobile environment? Clearly, the driver of the quality of the mobile environment are, first of all, the mobile environment itself. Needless to say that there is a, a different intrinsic quality of uh, application which run on the latest iPhone versus application which run to a no-brand smartphone. The second, which is related to this, are the expectations by the end user. So the different end users, depending on the device they have, they have an expectation in terms of the quality. The third is that clearly the application market defines quality standards. Define quality standards in terms of what can be on the application and how the application can be actually deployed and what can be deployed on the application. So, as we said, there are this number of inherent or evolving constraints, and we can, we have to manage them as suitable non functional requirement, remembering that if they are evolving, we have to plan for the future evolution of the system. And <clears throat> clearly, as we said, the user expectation is a major driver because at the end, will be the user who will determine the success of our application. And by downloading, linking, uh, disliking, rating, and recommending application, we will be able to determine what is the thing of the user. And clearly, this understanding is not uh, so trivial, because users can be divided, as we will see later on, in different segments. And so not only I need to understand the perception of the user, but if I want to monetize my application, I need to understand well the difference between the perception of the user who are ready to pay for my applications versus the user who are ready to use my application, creating for me different revenue streams versus application where there is no expected revenue stream from the user. So there are this very different aspects which I need to fully consider in order to make business out of mobile now. And so <clears throat> the major application store impose publishing guidelines, and they typically are very influential. And clearly, if uh, they are not honored, the application is not showcased. So also the application market define constraint on my application. So what are the application markets? So application market respond to the huge demand of end user for mobile devices devices, and they permit users to find given application to download easily in a single store front, and allow developers also to showcase their product to a large number of potential customers. So they act as broker between developers and users. So the first mobile market was introduced by the iPhone, by Apple, of the, for the iPhone in 2008, and from there on, there has been always new mobile markets, which has appeared as a market. Now, 
every major producer has its own mobile market. So the Apple has its own, Android has Google Play, and then two additional markets uh, which are linked to two different specific instances of Android phone, the Nook of Nokia and the one of Amazon. And then we have Windows Mobile, which is Windows Marketplace, and then we have Rim Blackberry for our Blackberry upward to determine the application of uh, our BlackBerry, to download the application for the BlackBerry. Clearly, out of this mobile market, the largest in terms of uh, uh, application, in terms of downloads, not anymore in terms of application, is the iOS Store, which features so far 50 billion downloads. The second active is the Google Play, which is known as Android Market, which has now more application than the, I, the Apple iPhone market, the the iOS store, but whose number of downloads is still behind. So we are at the level of 40 billion downloads. And then we have a much smaller market for Nook, which started in 2011 with 50,000 application, and we don't have a statistic about downloads. Likewise, for the Amazon App Store, for which we have 40,000 applications. And for the Windows Phone, for which we have 145,000 applications and 2 billion downloads. And lastly, we have our uh, Rim Blackberry market, where we have 100,000 applications and about 3 million. Download. So we see that the numbers are very different. And clearly the numbers say that right now we have two, two leaders of our market. Our market is an ol oligopoly where there are two leaders which are leading. And this should also give us a hint on where uh, we should play our application depending on the market we are targeting. Clearly the openness of the operating platform allow different store model clusters, depending on the centralization strategy. We have some system integrator platform, and we have also some enabler platform. So for the system integrator platform, we have that the asset of the platform and the customer ownership are in the hand of the platform. So applications are bounded to a single distribution platform. No other application stores are supported in this case. And example are the iOS for the Apple, the Reno Blackberry upward, and so on. The platform owner controls many or most of the assets involved in the mobile service provision, and the platform leaves open several customer relationship capabilities to third parties. Different application stores are welcome in this case. For example, I have the Android, which uh, officially is supporting Google Play, but also coexists with uh, Nook apps, Amazon App Store, and also other. And then we have other kind of uh, environments. So, if I want to talk about the mobile software uh, business model, I have to take into consideration the fact that software apps complement the sale of a device by giving the possibility of freely enriching. So, on the top of the actual, on the top of our actual device, we make rich our device by putting applications. The device without application would have a value which is lower. So, this takes the application store model to a different level, because selling a mobile device is a part of the selling of an entire ecosystem, which consists of a hardware device, of its operating system, of the application store, and of a range of software apps. And we see that we are really building, in our world, in practice, three kinds of ecosystems, three plus one. So there is a big ecosystem which is centered on Apple, which is Apple, Apple, Apple. This is the Apple iPhone, the iOS store, and everything written for it in Objective-C, which is a very closed world, very consistent. We have the second large ecosystem, which is the ecosystem for Android, where we have <coughs> the Android operating system on the top of the Android operating system, which is Linux units. We have applications which are written in Java and are deployed on different kind of uh, hardware sold by different kind of uh, manufacturers, HTC, Samsung. 
And then we have another closed environment, but not so completely closed, which is the Windows environment, which again has, you know, this kind of stuff. There used to be also um, an attempt to have a more open environment uh, by Nokia, when Nokia proposed an ego operating system, which then it was discontinued, and then Nokia embraced the Windows, uh, the Windows, uh, the Windows world, the Windows ecosystem, but still there are some interesting movement also in such an area. But we see that, but we say also that there are some interesting aspects. For instance, the, probably right now, the one of the major propeller of the old Unix operating system is the Mac, because the Mac has underneath Unix. Still, the operating system of the iPhone is not related to Unix, while Google does not yet have a full tablet the only tablet it has its feature Chrome as an operating system, but the underlying operating system for our mobile device is indeed Linux and Unix. <coughs> Sorry. So the actors altogether that you have to consider in planning your application for our mobile device are the product manufacturer, the platform provider, the system intermediary, the software application developer, and at the end, our customer. So to share the business model, I need to organize a business model where I can have, you know, an efficient way of uh, producing uh, development and to have developer consolidate their solution and provide them to the target user. And uh, clearly, if I have an environment which is fast for uh, to deliver solution for developer, this is the most liked, most liked environment for the developers. A different perspective is the one of the application stores. Clearly, for the application store, the goal is to have environment to have to sell application which work mostly on their target. Environment. So people don't change target environment, don't change platform. If you know the goal of the iOS store is to promote application which help people also selling the underlying device, the iOS, the iPhone. And also typically the application store get a share of what is sold in them of around 30%. Then we have software developers. <coughs> And for software developers, we have an attractive reason in terms of exposure and profit. And uh, uh, for software developers, uh, we have, uh, you know, typically they get 70% of the profit, but they are not by itself attached to a specific market, apart from the fact that different markets may require a different programming skills, and so they could be more prone to one than the other. And on the other side, there are also tools which help to develop cross-platform applications, losing a bit of ability. To, uh, to devote, uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, the most detailed functionality of a given operating system. And then for customers, by choosing a specific mobile device, uh, mobile device the customers select an operating platform and one of possible several stores, and the key aspect of the customer choice is the customer desire to have its need satisfied, which is more typically driven by, uh, you know, the consistency of the market rather than of its openness, even though it's not always so. But clearly the customer choice is the one which will can decide about the success of the specific software market. So please feel free to, uh, feel free to ask questions, if you have any. Let's say that overall the success for us will be our success of uh, being able to orchestrate all the different components. For we as a, as a developer, the success will be to orchestrate the different components of the software market, of the producer, of the hardware, and of the customers. So that all together, we will be interested in leveraging the hardware, the store, the user experience by means of our application. And uh, the feature of the software market is, as we said, 
the software market will enable us to reach a number of users which is incredibly higher than the number of users you typically reach with a standard to desktop application. So let's go more in detail on saying how can I make, how can I develop an application which is successful? How can I assure the quality of my application? So we have to ask ourselves how we can define the characteristic and the pattern of what a mobile application should look for, how a mobile application should perform, and the constraint a mobile application should comply. So how can we define quality? We have a subjective definition of quality, and we say that quality cannot be immediately quantified, but can be immediately recognized. So it means, uh, I can definitely say that something is not of good quality, but it's not so easy to determine someone, to design someone of being of good quality. So looking for definition, I can go and I can look at the comment of a user, the rating of a user, I can do data mining, I can look at the application market policies, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> when we start looking at uh, the different uh, criteria of application market, we need to understand that we need to be able to commercialize a product in an application store to comply with its minimum requirement, to include comprehensive features that encompass a large number of quality attributes, and so that we need to put together this kind of attributes which are relevant. What are these kind of attributes which can be relevant? Well, here we have a list that I'm going to discuss later on. It's not that we have to comply to all this list, but clearly this list are lists that we have found need to be taken into consideration in order to make a successful application. First, we have features which are intrinsic of the target platform, like performance. So we need to make an application which perform properly, which is enhanced which make good use of uh, the feature of uh, the system. I need to have an application which is responsive, meaning doesn't let me wait too much before performing what I want. And this is especially important in a phone. You know, in a phone, I'm used to dial without having to wait. So people you know, need, need to handle. And if they have to force the user to wait, they need to use those strategies which are typically employed to make people not be too much bored. And then clearly, seamlessness, the application shall not crash. <coughs> and the other aspect is of functionality. So you need to have an application which performs as it is advertised in the store. So it doesn't perform bad in terms of our desire. We need to have an application which handles properly energy because application requires to exercise the same use of energy resources to avoid the battery drain. I need to have an application which uh, exposes uh, properly the security, including the right use of security protocol, cryptography, credential API, not to expose customer data, hardware management through official API. And then we need to create application which expose a good user interface, possibly a standard one, so people can easily find their way across our application, and we can maximize what are called the network effects. And also, we should avoid intensive content being offensive, not promoting the illegal activity, forbidding malwares, imposing application ratings for mature applications. And then, you know, these are more content-oriented in terms of ability to properly organize the application, need to protect properly the brand through my application, and then, remember we said, we deal with an environment where we build our application in time. So our application evolves over time. So we need to properly manage the customer feedback. Because our application today may be different than the one tomorrow. We said, it's a, for us, it's much easier to install new version of our application, to deploy new version. So it's a constant, it's an intrinsically agile. And so we need to be able to process properly the customer feedback using different metrics for my feedback, like the number of downloads. Clearly, if people like it, they download it. 
however they may be misleading you know because they may be downloaded and people may not like it and so <coughs> I need to look at the rating but this rating by itself is misled because what means five star by ten user is five star by ten user better than three and a half star by hundred users and then I need to manage properly the contents the comments which are produced and this is not so easy and then look at tweets uh, and uh, of how people speak, uh, speak about my application on the web and then it's possible to insert in my application mechanisms to track the user with the user. So provide value back to the user if we are able to understand how they use our application. Again, take into account that this needs to be done with explicit presence of the user on one side and on the other side we need to ensure that the user tell us what is using the power application, what it likes, whether we can extend, whether it's something missing, whether there is a missing thing. And so we need to instrument to the level which is possible without, you know, again, with the acceptance of the end user and with our ability to not slow down our applications in order to make sure that people, you know, inform us of how to make the next generation. And this is a feature of the mobile market which is much smaller in the typical desktop application. So it's a major aspect of unity level. So here we have an <coughs> example of our application in terms of uh, sentiment analysis, in terms of uh, you know, different analytics, in terms of uh, application of our uh, users. And then so once I made an application which is successful, I need to understand how I can monetize your application, how can make money out of my application. And clearly, you know, software, mobile application are one of today's fastest growing digital software. However, if you think of the huge number of applications which are deployed on the mobile market, it is not true that all those applications are also successful applications. Some of those applications are really unsuccessful applications. Some of the developers don't make a single penny. So I need we deal in an environment with a huge concurrency, with strong competence, determine how I can, you know, monetize, how I can create value out of my application. The most, the easiest idea is I can get people paying from my application, but I can ask people here in the attendee how many people, how many people have ever bought an a paid application. I know if you could just go on and raise your hand on the little gadget on the top, you know, you see that there is a gadget here on the top and you can put whether you have ever paid for a given application. So one person raised the hand, only one person, let's make the counter proof. Okay, two people who have never paid for an application. Let's see if someone can say, I never made the money I never paid for my application. Okay, well, we have it's not easy. Two people have never paid for an application. Okay, two people, so you say three people, okay, two and a half, three. So you see, the majority of people never pay for, for applications. Means uh, clearly it's not easy to get money directly from users of applications. So the second approach is to use a so-called freemium. I sell an application for free, and then I have a different version of this application, and I also I also sell services based on this application or advertisement based on this application. Clearly, this market is more appealing for the user because it's more likely that I will have a user that I will have a user answering, buying, downloading, using my application. Oh. There is a person with a raised hand. OK, no, no more raised hands. OK, fine. I want to just to check if there is any question going on. Very good. So um, So at this point, you know, we need to <coughs> clearly, if I want to monetize, we need to select what is the operating system, which is the best, in order to sell our application. 
and then I need to determine whether it is suitable then to perform a multi-platform development. Other best practices are, you know, to give, put trailers of application, give free trials, and have in-application purchases. Altogether, you know, we have no silver bullet. We need to strategically understand our environment. You know, we are selling skills on this area in order to determine how I can better organize my application, whether to go for monetization, for freemium, for advertisement, for selling our pre services, for using our application as a Trojan horse to enter a new, a new environment. And so these are the different aspects that we may, may want to, to consider for selling our application. And first of all, you know, we want to understand the kind of software market where we want to go. Clearly, I want to target a software market with a high visibility, where there are lots of downloads because there is more likely that I get much more users. And the software markets are by no means Google Play and the iOS app store. However, these two markets are not identical, as <coughs> I will discuss in a short while. So clearly, an application market has the advantages because it's a one-stop shop. I can find, download, install my application. I can use the application market for marketing and promotion. Uh, for my applications. I can uh, work on uh, application recommendation, so I can suggest new application to the user. I can uh, work on specific uh, interest. I can make application accessible, and I can share a market uh, penetration. I can understand how people use it. And, uh, you know, we said already that there are uh, these four major markets plus two, Plus, we have markets which are more for uh, developers, which are perfect for developing, for studying, but they are not so for target users, they work fine, but they are not so effective for uh, typical uh, end users. And so, our goal uh, to select the application market is to consider how to focus on the target, how to direct and enhance the exposure of the user, and how to maximize the revenue out of this. And there are a number of considerations that are equally important. For instance, the strategy, the targeting, the marketing we put, the economy we put on the top of this, and the quality of our application. However, it is necessary to analyze and rank them according to different scopes. So how can we consider the different factors? So I can, how can I handle the share, the large number of users I have, the diversity, the different developers, for our application, the revenues we put to reach financial success, the reputation to build a career as a developer, the localization where we want to sell our application and the investment. All of these are key criteria that we need to determine in order to develop our application. Because our goal to develop an application is you know, to make revenue. But the revenue is not just what they put down revenue as a financial success. There are different aspects they need to consider for me, in order uh, to create, uh, you know, my application. We know that, for instance, big corporation already now are hiring open source developers based on data mining on open source repositories. Under this perspective, developing a good application is also a good vehicle of creating a good reputation and to become a very successful consultant or a successful freelance developer. So we notice that, you know, the amount of things you have to consider are huge and depending on what I'm aiming at, I need to select a suitable map. So if my target is showing off myself as a user, clearly I may want to go to a third party market where developers are concentrated, because there it is more likely that I will be noticed as a professional developer. And in terms of share, as I said, there are interesting phenomena to consider. So we have that you know we have two leaders overall. We have uh, the App Store and Google Play with Windows uh, going down, uh, growing but uh, far away, and the BlackBerry you know going down. And with third-party stores, typically for uh, low-share uh, users. In terms of diversity, as we said, we have you know the Google Play market. 
with uh, about uh, 42% <coughs> of our market. And we have the App Store and the Window Phone Marketplace with a small percentage of uh, overlapping uh, of overlapping applications. Now, in terms of revenue, it's also very interesting to consider the situation. So we said, right now, clearly, Apple is the one with the highest number of downloads. So here we can put, you know, in blue, the iOS store of the Apple, and in yellow, the Google Play. So we noticed that Google Play is catching up and is showing more interested revenues versus the iPhone. And also, we notice that in terms of, of uh, reputation, Google Play users are typically more uh, price savvy, they are more technically profiled, so they typically uh, can expose you know, more interest toward their application. Uh, however, you know, iOS users are more ready to pay, <coughs> while BlackBerry typically are aging business users. Windows Mobile has an interesting share of newcomers, and legacy Nokia users, and Amazon and Nook have some device-specific users. Now, in terms of localization, it's also interesting to understand the market. So we notice that in terms of uh, uh, top countries by downloads, we have that uh, for the Google Play, the highest downloads are in the United States and then South Korea and India, followed by Russia and Japan. While for the iOS, we have uh, still United States first, but then we have China, and United Kingdom, and then Japan and France. No presence of South Korea, no presence of India. So this already tells us something if I want to develop applications for this revenue. But then the second aspect is, who gives me direct revenue? Who gives us money back? For who buys the application? Here, you know, for the Google Play, again, the second place is Korea, but interesting, number one is uh, Japan. And the United States are back down to the third position. Russia and India disappear, and fourth and fifth are United Kingdom and Germany. On the contrary, for the iOS, the first one is United States, the second is Japan, and then we have United Kingdom, China, and Australia. <clears throat> In terms of initial investment, if I need to put an application is $25 for one time for Google Play and $20 per application, two days of review process, and the market revenue is 30% of sales and 70% for the developers. For the App Store, we have $100 per year, and then the application submission is free, the review process is one week, and we have the market revenue of 30% of sales and 70% of markets, and 30, 70%, sorry, 30% for the market and 70% for developers. For Windows, we have $100 per year, and then something similar to the iOS store. So altogether, which, how should we define the target? So we should look at Android if we, are, if we care about the market share. If uh, iOS, uh, we have to select uh, iOS if we want a financial success. If we want Windows Marketplace for multi home application and BlackBerry for old legacy users of our application. And now, so what application market should we target? Well, I would go typically to, you know, the frontliners, to Google Play and App Store, both for visibility and quality. And for specialized brand product, I would go for the Barnum Noble Nook, for Amazon, for Kindle. And third party store phones, if you don't care about maximizing their visibility to non mainstream users. For the region, what local market should you develop for? Use Japan, South Korea for higher profit. Use China, India, and Russia for higher visibility. Take away, remember the current mobile market is different from the PC market of the 90s, where the market share was translated in financial success. This is not true. This anymore. So altogether, summarizing my presentation, mobile software platform are one of the most important targets for the distribution and the utilization of user-oriented software. Mobile application stores are primary channels for the dissemination of a user software products, hosting thousands of apps and reporting millions of downloads per day. Smartphones are driven by powerful operating systems that allow users to add and remove applications, employing an architecture that is similar to the one of a regular PC. And apps have to cope with several constraints inherent 
to the mobile ecosystem not present in conventional desktop computing. The quality of the app is defined not only by the user, but also by the environment and by the app market. And app have a particular business model that foresees high competition, large distribution, app stores, and specific quality features. There are a number of monetizing techniques that have to be exercised. Impact and perception of our app can be assessed via download, reading, common sentiment, and the selection of a proper app marketplace is of paramount importance to increase the chances of uh, financial success for us. So, you know, a good understanding of the environment and its business model is of the highest importance, and this is, you know, where we work. And this requires to design and deploy good software products and demand to generate and to handle proper the strategy to uh, analyze and to create an appropriate return of investment out of each development process. And so, you know, at the end, promoting research and collaboration on mobile software is essential. And, you know, we aim at furnishing always better application. We, need, we aim always at producing, you know, application which give us the highest revenues. And we need to properly structure and understand ourselves. We need to understand, first in ourselves, what is our measure of success. And then we need to determine which kind of application, in which market, which, which quality characteristics is going to match our identified success. So I would like to thank you all for listening to me. And now I'm ready for questions. Hey, Giancarlo, thank you very much for that detailed presentation. You really gave out a, a, a large amount of information, and you've, you've earned that, that drink of water you're taking right now, that's for sure. Um, as he said, at this point, we'd like to move over to the question and answer session. Um, to ask your questions, on the left-hand side of the screen is the questions pod. Uh, you just want to type in your question and click the enter button or, or, uh, or hit your enter button or click the speech balloon to ask the question, and we'll add it to the queue and get to it. Uh, our first question is, can you provide a precise definition of quality for a mobile application? Okay. You see, I have no definition for quality in mobile application. Because really, the goal, our ability, is the ability to take a given idea and to determine what are the key quality features for this idea. And depending on the idea, the quality feature can be very different. Because, you know, one thing is if we divide, develop an application for the BlackBerry for given and experienced user. And this will require certain quality features. Another thing is if we develop a game. You know, in a game, I need fast responsiveness. I need to have, you know, really good user of a user interface. Another thing is if I develop, you know, a kind of a service I put on the top, like, you know, for instance, a service which allows me to determine the exchange rate. So all of this, given the fast evolution of the market, given you know, the kind of different kind of users, given the different target you know, localization, the different region where it's selling, all of this requires different definition of quality. So our ability is in understanding the context, and based on the context, build a suitable quality model. Any, is it OK? Anyone? Has any? OK. Uh, uh... I think that's okay. And the, the uh, next question, uh, can I use a lean approach to develop Listen, a mobile please. application? Because, you know, I think lean and uh, lean and uh, um, mobile go hand in hand. For instance, for the idea that, you know, in mobile we constantly release new application. When you connect to the Google Store, to the iOS Store, you often see new version of your tool, which didn't happen before when we were developing application for the desktop. So now the mobile environment is really a major promoter of a lean and incremental approach. So definitely, you know, in general, developing mobile application, I think lean is a good idea to do. Lean and the child, you know. Okay. Um, and just to remind everyone, you can definitely ask questions uh, from this presentation and the questions for Giancarlo Pod. Uh, just type them in and hit enter or click the speech balloon and we'll add them to the queue and uh, get to them as quickly as we can. Um, the next question, Giancarlo, uh, Giancarlo, should I develop for iOS or Android as a first step? Again, I should ask myself, what is my goal for developing? Do I develop for monetization? Do I develop for creating a reputation? 
do I develop for building a service? And each one of these have a different answer. So, you know, if you want a short answer, if I develop to make money, definitely I will go for the IS first because there is where there are users ready to pay. And, uh, you know, as we saw before in the graph, this graph is really a good indication. If I develop, I want to find users who pay for the application, I, you know, we develop for iOS and United States and Japan. This is what the number tell us. While if I develop for creating, you know, a good reputation for myself, well, you know, United States and South Korea with Android or one of the different uh, uh, software mark, uh, open software mark. This would be uh, my, you know, fast answer. But again, it, it really depends studying in deep uh, and profiling ourselves in deep. This is where, you know, most of the effort should be placed. Okay, and uh, we have another question. Um, what are the common mistakes made in developing an app? The first common mistake is try to do everything at once, not perceiving that an app is an involving entity. So really, I should uh, developing an app requires uh, developing a first set of solidly designed, solidly developed, but limited amount of feature, and then build on the top of this. Because the market is changing. If I wait too much, I will have a different answer underneath. So it's, you know, and this relates to the first question, agile. Yes, agile. Agile and fast response to the market because the market will tell me, and actually the application is the best way to know what I'm going to do. By developing application, I know better my application, especially if, as we said, I instrument it properly. Okay, it uh, appears I've reached all the questions. So, uh, Giancarlo, I just want to give you an opportunity to give any closing thoughts you might have to everyone. Um, before we close this out, I just want to remind everyone that uh, if while he's doing that, if you do have any last-minute questions, feel free to type them in, and uh, we'll definitely pose them to him before we, we log out. So, Giancarlo, if you have any closing thoughts you'd like to leave everyone with, yeah, say, please do yeah, so. No, thank you, everyone, for being here and listening to us. Uh, the mobile market is a great market for making great applications and for monetizing, for you know, becoming rich, but you need to study properly. You, don't, you need to have an open mind. You need to understand your target user, you need to build inside your application technique, which allow you to drive the future development of your application, and you need to, to understand fully, you know, your users and your motivation to drive things. With this premises, you know, it's really a rich environment to develop, you know, a significant amount of uh, money out of it. And again, thank you everyone for listening and for posing interesting questions. Hey, on behalf of everyone at Cutter, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, just as a reminder that if you have like to hear more from Dr. Suchi on the mobile environment, he will be speaking at this year's Cutter Summit in November. You can find details on the summit at cutter.com. If you have further questions or comments uh, that you, you may not have uh, given today or you have some questions that come up later on today, we'll be happy to get those answered. Um, all you'll need to do is you can email John Carl directly at gsuchi, it's G-S-U-C-C-I, at cutter.com, or if you didn't write that down, uh, you can also email it to sales at cutter.com, and we will definitely make sure that Giancarlo sees uh, that question. Giancarlo, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for everyone for attending today's session. I hope you found it valuable. Uh, the, for other webinars and question, answer, and peer-to-peer -peer sessions, please visit cutter.com, and uh, you can see the schedule there. Thank you thank for you. attending.